before I begin this review of X Band Days of Future Past, I might as well give you a brief, brief, brief feelings on the other X Men films and uh, then dive into this movie because it's important that I talk about uh, my feelings towards the other X Men films and why uh, my expectation wasn't as high as everyone else's were. Um, let's start with the first X-Men movie. Um, I thought the film was good, um, but just good. I felt the film was carried by a certain select actors, namely Wolverine, um, which that really was his film, in my opinion. Um, and uh, he was really the main reason why I stood, uh, I stayed with this movie. Um, not to take anything away from the other actors, I thought that... Uh, that uh, Patrick Stewart was uh, pretty much he 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 was meant to play Xavier, um, and uh, Ian McKenna. I thought he was actually pretty good as well. Um, but this movie, uh, as much as I actually liked the interactions, I didn't really care about the overall storyline revolving around them or anything else in that film for that matter. The film uh, did not have a very strong script. And then you had Hugh Jackman come along, and Hugh Jackman really was um, the reason why I stayed focused on this movie, and the reason why the film was as good, in my opinion, as it was. Um, there was he was a fascinating character. There was a past that seemed to seep in with the film, um, and the fact that he was trying to help um, Rogue played surprisingly well by Anna Paquin. Um, despite my feeling that it should have been played by an older actress, I can understand that she was just coming into the X-Men. And that was fine by me, and I think that any, in any case, she done her job well. Um, X, um, 2, X-Men United, um, a lot of people considered to be um, the best of the series um, at the time. I thought the film was fun. I thought there was there was more focus on action. Um, there was more at stake that was going on in that particular one, being that the mutants was on the verge of extermination. You had um, more interactions from the other characters. I think Nightcrawler was one of my favorite characters in that movie. Um, Storm felt more like Storm a little bit. Um, however, the film does fall short in the third act. Um, largely for the way they handled um, Jean's Grey's departure in this film. Now, you know she was going to come back because they showed the Phoenix symbol, uh, so they obviously was going to do that um, in the film. Um, overall, I thought it was fun, thought it was entertaining, um, and I actually gave it a three stars from that. It was not a four-star film, I'm not gonna, and, and I'm not gonna, nobody's going to tell me it's a four-star film, but it was a good film, a much better um, take than the, the first film. X-Men The Last Stand. Now, this is hated by a lot of people, and a lot of people always said that have um, the director for the first two and even The Days of Future Past would have been in charge of that. It would have probably been a better film. Um, maybe that is, maybe it wasn't. Who knows? It all depends on what script he has to work with and what he has to do to make it work. Keep in mind... Just because he's a director doesn't mean he wrote the script. It just means he is the director. I think that the people need to understand that there are other people behind him. Unless he was involved in the script play, like uh, Sylvester Stallone is involved with most of his writing, then and only then I can say, <coughs> yeah, maybe he probably would have done a better job. But to me, um, I'm not going to hold any excuses to a film or make that as a reason why um, to hate a film. Keep in mind, the director went to do Superman Return. Um, Brian Singer, but his, his name keeps like escaping me for some reason. He went to do Superman Return. That was his choice, um, not the studio. So um, he walked away from the project. Um, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, when the f when the new, when the, this director came in, when the new director came in, um, my only concern was was the movie good. And despite a lot of people's anguish of the film, I thought this film was good. I thought this film was very, very good. It's not perfect again, but there was a lot of things I actually enjoyed. Kelsey Grammer playing Beast, for instance, was the perfect choice. He brought Beast to life. I really did enjoy how they did that, um, did that, um, that character. And so, this is one of the things why I say, yeah, it's not what you expected, especially when they started killing off major characters. Um, but I actually wasn't mad for that reason, and the reason is, is when this film, before this film was came out, it was already announced by the studios that they were not making any more X-Men film. That this was the last of the X-Men film that was going to make it a trilogy and focus on everything else, pretty much origin stories. This was their idea, this was their plan. 
And I didn't care about that. I just said, okay, fine. This is the last one. Let's see how it was. So when I seen death happening in this movie, especially the death of Jean Grey, it didn't bother me. It didn't affect me because I knew, okay, they ain't making no more X-Men after this point. And if they is going to make an X-Men, they it's going to reboot it from the very beginning. And uh, so I had no problem with that. Um, the film was good. Um, they, they did focus a lot on um, choices. Should they, stay, uh, should they embrace their mutant powers or should they decide to relinquish it by a new, um, by a new source done by this boy whose mutant powers is to take your mutant powers away. Uh, it, it was an experimental test. Of course, many mutants consider this as a threat and they're looking to kill this kid. This is where the X-Men comes in. And uh, this is also where even the Phoenix have played a part in this. Because uh, the Phoenix uh, is now out of control. She's now deadly. She's, uh, she, you know, she basically killed, without intending to, she killed um, Cyclops. She, she killed, I'm sorry, she killed a lot of people in this, in this movie. Not Cyclops, I'm sorry. But you know where I'm getting to. Um, they, they, they're filmed... The film did a lot of stuff here that uh, that didn't uh, click well with a lot of fans, uh, especially the, the death or supposed death of uh, of Charles Xavier. Or even though at the end of X Men: The Last Stand, um, you heard a voice that sounded like Charles Xavier, but they never really get into details, including the mo the newest film of how he survived. I think that was the one thing people was very upset about um, when the new film came in, that how is he still alive? How is this possible? They didn't go into details. It doesn't, and at the point in it, it doesn't matter, and I explain a, a, a little bit. Um, this is how it was the end of X-Men. I enjoy it. I understand why people didn't like it. But to me, is it the, the best of the series? I think it was better than part one. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. Um, but it wasn't better than part two. And to me, Although there is some problems, there's a lot of problems that we can actually go through. I thought the film was fun to watch. I thought it was good. And I thought it was a decent closure to what they was trying to do. Now let's talk about X-Men Origin Wolverine. I gotta talk about this because, again, this is part of the X-Men universe. I was into this film for the first 10, 13 minutes of the film. And then as the, min as the time went on and on, I became less and less interested to the point where I thought some of the stuff in this film was laughably ridiculous. I think the most biggest crime they actually did in this movie was uh, Deadpool, which they wanted to make a film right after this. There was supposed to be two X-Men related films. Deadpool which is, was going to be a standalone film, and you only hope after seeing the um, the teaser um, or the test trailer, they like to call it. You hope they do it just the way they they were shown in that um, in that test footage, and not the way they did it in this movie, because it was an absolute disgrace. It was an absolute disaster uh, what they did with Deadpool. I couldn't believe how they messed that character up in the movie. It was just a horrific butchering of a character um and the film let's be honest was not well put together the effects was not well put together and uh, they wanted to make an x-men origin chronicles with the next one being magneto and uh, that one film torpedoed everything about that they abandoned the idea after that because the the, the reviews were so horrible the fans was getting on them and the film although made money it wasn't nearly as much as they thought it was because the word of mouth was just so ferocious so that's what happened with that one. And um, we move on to um, um, X-Men The First Class. X-Men The First Class was okay. I didn't think it was great. There was a lot of continuities that was happening. And I would have probably forgave it if it was just a complete reboot of the series. But no, it wasn't. Um, this, this is acknowledging the universe of the X-Men um, story. Um, they acknowledged that this was in that same universe. This was not a reboot at all, at least in the way that you would think a reboot would done. Um, and uh, even though I liked it, how the interaction, because that was the height of the movie, how these two, how Charles Xavier and Magneto actually interacted with each other, I felt the film fell, fell flat on other elements that I thought it, that, that was key missing. Um, I actually did respect the fact that they didn't put Wolverine in this film, and if he was, he was a brief cameo in this movie, and I actually thought that was actually a smart move, but clearly, um, they worked it on, I think what hurt this film a lot, um, for a lot of people was, 
there wasn't mutants that maybe people cared about. That was the whole thing. But I don't think that was their main attention. They wanted to focus on um, Charles Xavier and Magneto uh, throughout the film. And I think they did a good job of that. Um, there were some things I thought they dropped the ball on. But I, I thought it was okay. It was not bad. It could have been better quality. It was definitely a step to the right direction in terms of um, bringing back faith towards the X-Men film. Because a lot of people did not have faith in first class, uh, even when they saw the trailer, they didn't felt this film could bring back on uh, the franchise um, as much as many people hoped for. Uh, it was already announced that they was doing another X-Men. They also signed in a lot of people, and but before then, we had to deal with another Wolverine movie. Um, this one pretty much solidifies that everything was being taken place in the same universe. Because this one actually follows the events of X Men: The Last Stand. Um, Wolverine is pretty much, you know, he's, he's lost in himself and grievance and everything else. And um, this film, for the most part, is a better film than the, the X Men Origins Wolverine. But it's still not a good film. Um, this film was boring in many ways that I actually was surprised. And when it really did pick up, I felt they really held back on some of the elements. Um, and I think the PG-13 um, style um, in terms of making a movie really did hurt this film a lot. Um, a lot of fight scenes was underwhelming. The final battle between him and this giant machine who uh, who was created by his um, his former best friend, uh, was a was complete waste. I did not care about this scene whatsoever. I really didn't. Um, the one thing I did care about is um, Ken, who Jack Ben plays plays Good Wolverine. Um, I actually liked his performance. I actually liked it. Uh, the other characters that was allies to him. But other than that, it's just not. <laughs> it was just a, a disappointment. Um, not as much as the um, as the first one, but still disappointing none, nonetheless. Because it was it was this drag. It was just not a a, a good a good well paced film. It wasn't really, and it was not a real scripted film either. Um, and again, this is a. It could have been a lot worse if it was somebody else playing Wolverine. It wasn't. But again, um, it's it's better. That's all I can say about it. It's just better. Now, with all the thing I said, you should already sense that I wasn't really jumping for joy when this film um, finally came to the theaters. Um, Days of Future Past. I saw um, two trailers of this movie, and um, I didn't know what to feel about this movie. I really didn't. Um, I actually liked the music they did. Uh, I think it's uh, Walk the Line, I believe, from the, from that movie. They took that uh, took the song from there, and it worked as well because, just to be honest, the guy who um, did this film also did uh, that uh, that particular film. So the, it, the trailer was epic, but knowing the history of X Men, I wasn't too sure where it was going to go, especially when you're using characters from both um, the past and present. Well, I'm happy to say this. Uh, out of all the X-Men films that I've seen, uh, from standalone X-Men films to the X-Men films in general, this was the best one by far. Um, this was well-written, which is kind of surprising because I never thought I would see a well-written X-Men uh, film. <coughs> well-acted. And was treated with absolute care. Um, let's start with the first thing I actually like about it. In case you're wondering, I'm not going to go too much into into major details again i like to keep it as simple as possible especially these reviews because i already went 13 minutes talking about the other films so i'm not gonna go you know 30 minutes so i'm trying to explain this film but i will explain this um this film um is one of the very few other than the, um, the first class that didn't focus on wolverine um, even though wolverine was a part of this film yes he's there yes he plays an important part of this film but he's not the important part of the film this film focused around Mystique and her actions, which led to the events that was going to happen in the future. Um, this is one of the reasons why Charles Xavier brought um, Wolverine back to the, to the past um, by using um, Shadowcat's powers um, to stop, Mis stop Mystique from committing um, murder. And this murder would have a change of events which lead to other stuff. Now, this is very important because it also explores Mystique's powers, which they didn't get into too many details, but what we do know is her powers are so strong, even more stronger than I think anyone ever realized, that her mut mutant powers can bring, bring, bring the destruction of every mutant in the future, as well as pretty much the destruction of the world. So this was pretty much more at stake than anything else. Um, 
Jennifer Lawrence reprised the role as uh, Mystique. I thought she did a, a a good job. Still wish the other or still wish the other actress who played Mystique in the original trilogy was there. But for the most part, they got a veteran actress who is very very good and really really looking forward to see how she does it. If in fact she's going to be back um, in the um, third. Um, and I pretty much think the last of the second trilogy, because I think that's what they want to do, is not go any past Apocalypse. Um, but who knows? The film makes money. They probably would do it anyway. Um, the film really did focus more on her. They also focus a lot on Charles Xavier and his downfall um, when he, back in the days, which is actually kind of surprising and actually welcoming, because um, we always look at Charles Xavier as this perfect um, wisdom guy, knows all guy, and here he is in this film, not only um, is a drug addict, um, but it's pretty much shielded his powers. He doesn't want nothing to do with his powers. So he's pretty much messed up. Yeah, the drug he's taking um, is making him walk again. Um... And I'm glad they actually brought um, some logic to it. Cause a lot of people say, how is he walking? How is he standing? He got shot. Um, but in this one, they explained what was going on. It was made by Beast. Um, and um, Beast is also in this film. But you start to see a lot of stuff happening. And you see the cause and effect of one action. Um, you have Magneto in prison inside the Washington Monument. How is that possible? You also see um, the effects of what Mystique is going through and why she is chosen to go to this path and kill this um, this, uh, this inventor, um, this arms dealer inventor, because of what she have done to all the mutants. We also realize that some of the uh, some of the mutants in uh, the first class have been has been killed off um, off screen, which is also a surprise, which led to even further conflict between Charles Xavier and Magneto, who Magneto um, still feels that what he's doing is for the cause of mutants. Um, we also found out that JFK is a mutant. <laughs> Go figure. Um, but there is a lot of stuff they are doing, a lot of elements they're doing that actually blended perfectly with this movie. And I really did like um, how they did it with this movie. Um, again, there were some slow things about this film that I wasn't too careful about. Um, there were some slow elements, but there were very few and far in between. I liked it how they did, um, how they introduced a new character in this film. I liked it the fact that this film... Um, really made it very clear that, hey, there's more at stake here than meets the eye. And I also liked it how they ended the film, uh, which will lead into the next film, and will also leave people guessing uh, what the hell to expect. Because here's the thing I did not expect this director to do. Um, director, I knew the director was going to do something um, on, in terms of ending it. I didn't know how. But he eventually did something that uh, was very risky. He literally rebooted and continue the franchise from square one, almost. Um, if you know how the ending, without going too much away, there was an incident that happened. They, and because of that incident, um, everything that uh, pretty much happened in three, um, and even in some points of two, was pretty much eradicated. It pretty much was gone. And uh, now we're starting pretty much right back towards um, Wolverine being in the uh, uh, Charles Xavier Academy for the Gifted. And now we have um, this situation going back to score one. Now, um, his memories are still intact, but everybody else's is not. And this led to a lot of people actually smiling, a lot of people saying, yes, he did a great job. Uh, um, I know Jimmy Johnson mentioned this um, in his review, um, that he said that he basically canceled out his um, his movies. Um, pretty much it came out of price. I don't necessarily think he canceled out more so than basically saying that universe that we now know no longer exists. It still, in many ways it does because Wolverine still has his memories. He still retained what has gone on here that keeps the connection. He's the connection towards the old franchise to this newer franchise. So in many ways he didn't actually erase it. In fact, he actually acknowledged and respected even the third even the film he had nothing to do with that this actually happened, and now this is an alternate universe, things have changed, and we're going to be focusing on that. At least you think they're going to be focusing on this, because um, the X-Men Apocalypse, I don't see them going back in time again um, to deal with that. So unless um, they're going to explain how he got his, um, uh, his metal claws, um, and because uh, if you all seen the ending, a lot of things have definitely changed, and uh, we, we, I'm actually curious now. I'm actually very, very curious on um, where they're going to go with this. Uh, 
I, I just was very, very happy seeing this film. I was very, very pleased with this film. Um, there's hardly any complaints again about this film. And this is what the X-Men I actually was looking for. Um, I wanted to have a good, sensible story, um, a well-balanced story, and I thought this was one of the better, um, well-written stories. Um, if it wasn't for the fact that Captain America came out the same year, I think this would have been the best comic film of the year. Unfortunately, I still hold that for um, Galaxy of Galaxy and Captain America. Captain America being the best written film, Garden of Galaxy was the most action-packed non-stop film. But this one falls right into that, that mix. Um, it's definitely one of the movies that I um, definitely enjoy. And uh, how much I enjoy it? Three and a half stars. That's how much I enjoy it. It was very, very fun. The actors who played in there was top-notch. Um, I only wish that they did more with uh, with Holly Berry, um, Alan Page, uh, Rogue. I thought they could have done a lot more. But then again, they wanted to focus the majority of the film on the future. That's what they did, and I, I could understand that. Um, but I did wish that they actually went further uh, in terms of explaining some of the stuff that happened. They really um, set up the, the second act, and they actually was back and forth with that. But this is clearly was. Uh, pretty much the the first class film more so than the original cast film. I will say this I was waiting for it. I was hoping they would, they would do it I've seen it in the trailer and they didn't disappoint me the interaction between both Xavier young and old It was very very good. It was very well written and I was not disappointed one bit uh, th that was actually uh, was the highlight of the film. Um, seeing these two um, talk to each other um, explaining what's going on and you start to see um, <coughs> I thought to see Charles Xavier, the young Charles Xavier, come back to his senses, and that's when you started saying, okay, that's the Charles Xavier I know. Um, I really did like it. I also liked it how Wolverine interacted with the young Charles Xavier uh, and making him make a promise, and that promise he didn't break. And uh, again, this is actually connecting um, the franchise a bit, actually connecting how uh, he was looking for them, for people, because if you look at X-Men watching Wolverine and how he was looking for for these certain characters, it made sense at that particular time. Um, now it makes sense. I know a lot of people did not like the fact um, that they actually, I don't know, they CGI Xavier to make him look younger. It just was weird, but for the most part, you can actually see him gathering these um, characters together uh, and just uh, basically forming what we now know now as the X-Men. So they did a great job with that. I think they did a, did a wonderful job um, of handling this movie. And again, it was more balanced than the whole entire um, series combined. It was very well balanced. Every actor played an important part there. I didn't feel there was no one wasted here. Again, there was the pacing issue. Um, I thought that was a uh, bit of a bit of a problem, but other than that, that's just uh, uh, that's just a small scale. So that's my feeling on the X Men um, Days of Future Past, and that's pretty much um, leaves me with one other film I had to talk about. A film I unfortunately uh, did not do well. I managed to catch it before the film came out of theaters, um, and I will be talking about that uh, right after my other review um, that I wanted to talk about but in general I guess you guys know it is the last comic movie that came out this year and it is the one um, that had bombed the hardest I mean oh I felt bad for this film um, but um, that's I might as well say it is Sin City um, Sin City I dying to kill for the question is even though it bombed was it a film that those people were seeing was it was it a film that uh, should have given it a chance by audiences I'll let you know that um, in the next review. But until then, J77 saying take care, be safe, and I'll talk to you soon. Goodbye.